Out front with me now, Norm Eisen. He's a former ambassador, of course, and also White House, White House ethics czar under President Obama. And Robert Bonsib, a former federal prosecutor who has known Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein for some 15 years. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate it. Uh, ambassador, your take on this news. More people in Trump's inner circle um, getting lawyers. Even, even one of Trump's lawyers is now getting a lawyer. What do you make of this? Uh, Kate, thanks for having me. And uh, we've seen this movie before. Uh, this is the uh, scandal cycle that periodically seizes uh, Washington. And uh, number one, uh, it is going to be a tremendous distraction for the White House and for Congress as they try to do their other business. Number two, Donald Trump is in genuine legal jeopardy here. Don't believe what Speaker Gingrich or my old criminal law professor Alan Dershowitz or anybody else says. Donald Trump uh, has, uh, 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 there are indications, there's an initial case that he's committed of obstruction of justice. So there's genuine jeopardy. Third and finally, the people around Donald Trump are being drawn in. So uh, fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be a very, very bumpy ride ahead. It already has been. And there are genuinely a variety of opinions on the obstruction of justice charge, as we see every night. Robert, um, if I can turn, turn with you to the other breaking news story tonight, there, the tension building in the Justice Department over whether Rod Rosenstein will recuse himself from the investigation. You go way back with him. Do you think he needs to take himself out of this investigation sooner rather than later? What's your take? Well, I've, I was a professional colleague of his for s some period of time, uh, and he's got a very good s uh, sense of uh, ethical antenna, if you will. And the decision as to whether, but he's also not afraid to be uh, in, the, in the mix of things. So mm. he's in a position where I think uh, he probably realizes it's important for having uh, a person in that position who has strong integrity, has a strong backbone, but also knows when the circumstances, if they change and put, would put him in a compromising position, uh, then he'll know that's the time to uh, walk out the door. Ambassador, where do you land on this? Do you think he needs to recuse himself now? Do you think it's inevitable or not? Uh, I agree with the Deputy Attorney General um, in his judgment that he uh, expressed this afternoon that uh, he does not need to recuse himself at this time. We'll see how the case develops, but um, at this point, it's just too early uh, for him to have to step aside hmm. from the investigation. So as a matter of ethics, of the legal precedents, uh, I think he's made the right decision, and we'll just see how things develop, but uh, n no recusal at this time. Robert, can I also ask you another kind of development with Rosenstein overnight is a statement that he put out in attacking anonymous sources. And just I'll read you just one part of it. We put it up there. It says Americans should exercise caution before, before accepting as true any stories attributed to anonymous officials. People saw that statement as really quite strange that he put it out. Why did he do it, do you think? Well, it is unusual for Department of Justice officials to comment in any way on ongoing investigations. And uh, I guess anybody's guess is as good as anybody else's. But it, in reading it, it sounds like it's an effort to say, let's take a step back. Let's let the professionals do their jobs. Don't rush to conclusions. Don't rely on these crazy uh, social media, anonymous sources, fake news, whatever you want to call them all this information circling uh, around out there with nobody having an idea of what the basis is, what the reliability is, or what the agendas are. So it may have been an, an effort simply to say, let us do our job, don't pay attention to the noise. But as, uh, but Ambassador, as um, Robert points out, it's, it gets to an investigation that is underway. Ill-advised? I mean, have you seen anything like this before? Well, uh, Rod, uh, Rosenstein has the worst boss in the world, ultimately, in Donald Trump. And I. That's an ethics I, judgment? I have not. Uh, it, it's a human judgment. I, I have no doubt. I, I had uh, difficult clients uh, over the years. Uh, and, you know, I have no doubt that there was some uh, expression from the White House, whether uh, probably came through Don McGahn, the White House counsel maybe through the chief of staff over there, Reince Priebus, uh, can you say something about these leaks? 
And so uh, the deputy attorney general did the best he could to please those those difficult bosses uh, while not unduly compromising. The weirdest thing about it, Kate, was the suggestion that some of the officials may not even be American officials. The hint mm -hmm. uh, that it was coming from uh, foreign uh, sources, uh, that, was, that was odd. So I think that uh, I would not have advised the deputy attorney general to do, if he's gonna do something, do something much more vanilla. Uh, but, you know, someday we'll find out how that sausage was made. It was not a very tasty one. <laughs> I don't even know what to pick up from that one, Norm. I will say, though, um, coming from our reporting from from White House officials, I, I should point out, ironically, anonymously sourced White House officials who would not be named, they do say that that statement was not coming from the White House and that he did not receive pressure from the White House to put that statement out. I will leave you with that tonight. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I really appreciate it.